Remember when Elon Musk promised that Optimus would be the perfect robot helper? He said it would do your chores, lift heavy loads in factories, and even replace human labor on a massive scale. Tesla would build 5,000 robots in 2025, and then millions more every year. People clapped, investors cheered, and it felt like the future was finally here. But what really happened once the robot was built? Well, things didn't go as planned. Behind the polished stage demos, Optimus ran into problem after problem. Problems that made Musk's promises look more like science fiction than science. Optimus wasn't ready for real-world tasks, and each issue stood in direct contrast to Elon Musk's bold claims. Musk said Optimus would work tirelessly, but in reality, the motors overheated under normal use. Instead of offering unlimited labor, the robot had to be shut down often just to cool off. Musk envisioned Optimus lifting heavy loads and helping with household chores, but the hands it came with could barely lift lightweight objects. Despite months of design iterations, even the most basic gripping tasks remained out of reach. That dream of a household assistant? Still a fantasy. Then came the mechanical endurance problem. Musk claimed Optimus would work in factories non-stop, but the gears inside wore out quickly, making the robot unreliable for extended use. Even more disappointing was the battery life. Far from operating independently for long hours, the robot drained power rapidly and had to be recharged frequently, making it unfit for sustained real-world deployment. All this led to a bigger issue. In June, Tesla officially halted production of Optimus and stopped ordering parts. Musk's ambitious goal of building 5,000 robots in 2025 was suddenly off the table. And that's despite already producing nearly 1,000 units, assembling a 400-person team, and pouring over $400 million into the robot's development. Each Optimus unit reportedly cost around $60,000 to build, yet couldn't perform even basic tasks effectively. The flaws ran too deep to patch. Tesla had no choice but to go back to the drawing board. A full redesign of Optimus is now underway. The current version, once touted as the cornerstone of Tesla's future, is being scrapped because it simply didn't work. In its existing form, Optimus could only move battery packs, and even that basic task, it performed slower than a human. A simple conveyor belt could do the same job, faster, cheaper, and with none of the hype. The fact that Tesla's most advanced humanoid robot can't outperform factory tools from decades ago is a massive blow. Despite all the investment, brain power, and public demonstrations, the original Optimus design is now considered a failure. One Tesla is racing to fix. Amid all these compounding problems, the Optimus program faced yet another blow. Milan Kovac, the head of the project, abruptly left Tesla. His exit couldn't have come at a worse time. Tesla was already grappling with overheating motors, weak hands, short battery life, and failing mechanical parts. Now it had lost the person leading the charge. Kovac wasn't just any executive. He was handpicked by Musk to steer the future of Tesla's robotics. His departure sent a clear signal. Things inside the Optimus program weren't just technically flawed. They were structurally unstable. Insiders say his resignation reflected deeper doubts about the project's direction, internal decision-making, and the intense pressure to meet impossible timelines. Without his leadership, the team was left in limbo, and the redesign that engineers already admitted was necessary suddenly became even more uncertain. It was a turning point that revealed how serious and deeply rooted the program's challenges had become. With Kovac gone and Tesla scrambling to rethink the robot's design, Attention from outside the company intensified. Critics from outside Tesla began noticing and openly questioning these glaring problems. Some of the loudest criticism came from people who had worked directly in the robotics field, including Benjamin Bolte, the founder of a new humanoid robot startup called K-Scale. Bolte was previously part of Tesla's autopilot and Optimus teams, giving him insider insight into how the project was run. He publicly questioned Elon Musk's design choices and claimed that many of the technical issues stemmed from Musk's top-down demands. According to Bolte, the pursuit of a human-like form over practical function was more about Musk's vision than engineering reality. His new company, K-Scale, is already selling its own humanoid robots, adding weight to his criticism 
and showing that there might be a better path forward that Tesla didn't take. So far, the situation looks rough. Tesla stopped production, the robot overheated, parts wore down fast, and battery life was poor. Even after building 1,000 units, the robot couldn't do basic tasks. Then the head of the program, Milan Kovac, left suddenly. At the same time, former team members began openly criticizing Musk's design choices. Meanwhile, new competitors like K-Scale started gaining real traction in the market. The cracks in Tesla's robot dream were becoming harder to ignore. Robotics experts argued that building Optimus with two legs made it unnecessarily complicated for industrial work. Many saw the design as more of a PR move than a practical solution, crafted to impress, not perform. Critics pointed out that the robot's public demos often appeared too polished, suggesting they were heavily scripted. Some even accused Tesla of teleoperating Optimus during these demonstrations to hide its limitations. Rather than showcasing true autonomy, the presentation seemed focused on delivering visual spectacle to match Musk's hype, not real-world functionality. They emphasized that simpler designs, like robots with wheels or more basic configurations, could handle factory tasks more effectively and efficiently. Even Tesla's suppliers started to question Musk's promises. Typically, suppliers are careful not to criticize major customers openly. Yet some suppliers privately expressed doubts about Tesla's ambitious timelines, highlighting serious concerns over the robot's feasibility. At the same time, competitors like Boston Dynamics, Unitree, and Amazon advanced quickly, developing robots capable of performing practical tasks in real-world environments. Unitree, for example, has already started selling its own humanoid robot model, marking a major milestone in commercial humanoid robotics. Their progress underscores how quickly the competition is advancing while Tesla regroups. So, is this the end for Optimus? Well, not necessarily. Elon Musk has shown he knows how to bounce back from failure. People once doubted SpaceX's rockets and Tesla's electric vehicles, too. But Musk pushed through those setbacks, turning both companies into massive successes. Now, Musk has handed control of the Optimus program to Ashok Eluswamy, a seasoned AI executive at Tesla. Eluswamy's experience in developing Tesla's self-driving technology could help guide Optimus toward practical improvements. Tesla has already begun testing several new robot designs, focusing on improved hands, stronger motors, and longer-lasting batteries. Musk has hinted that an upgraded version of Optimus will soon be unveiled, promising significant advancements that address previous problems. Musk's proven track record of overcoming major challenges in aerospace and automotive industries gives supporters hope that he can do the same with robots. Yes, the hurdles facing Tesla's Optimus are substantial, but Musk's ambitions remain equally large. If Tesla can address these significant early problems, Optimus still has a real chance to become the revolutionary product Musk envisioned. Right now, Optimus stands at a critical crossroads, struggling with setbacks, but positioned for a potential comeback that could once again redefine what people think is possible. If you think that's crazy, wait till you hear Musk's plan to send Optimus to Mars. That's right, in just two years, we could see a humanoid robot walking on the red planet. But here's the kicker. The details behind what Elon is planning are so insane that even NASA veterans are struggling to process. Them. Welcome back, guys. Alfie here, bringing you another massive update. Timeline for Optimus going to Mars now unveiled. And we've got the shocking details, so AI Nexus will cover every detail as it unfolds. Let's go. Let's start with the hard facts. During a private SpaceX briefing yesterday, Musk confirmed plans to launch five Starship rockets during the 2026 Earth-Mars transfer window. One of those massive 403-foot-tall vehicles will carry an uncrewed Tesla Optimus unit to the Martian surface. This isn't some conceptual PowerPoint presentation. Hardware is being built right now at Starbase in Texas. The mission has one clear objective, prove that Starship can land safely on Mars before risking human lives. Now here's where things get wild. Musk isn't just sending Optimus as a passive payload. The robot will be tasked with performing actual preparatory work for future human settlement. We're talking about a humanoid machine walking on another planet, handling tools, and potentially even constructing basic infrastructure. If this works, it would mark the single most ambitious robotics achievement in history. But the timeline has experts divided. While Musk says 2026 is locked in, 
Top astronomers like Derek Pitts believe we're realistically looking at 2050 before the technology is truly ready. Let's break down exactly how this insane mission would work. The journey itself is a nightmare of physics. Between 80 to 150 days of travel covering anywhere from 34 to 250 million miles depending on planetary alignment. Starship would need to execute a propulsive landing through Mars's paper-thin atmosphere, something no spacecraft has ever accomplished at this scale. Current Mars landers use parachutes, but Starship's massive size makes that impossible. Instead, it'll have to flip sideways and fire its Raptor engines with impossible precision to avoid crashing. And that's just getting there. Once on the surface, Optimus would face temperatures swinging from minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, constant dust storms, and radiation levels that would fry most electronics. The robot's 5 miles per hour walking speed suddenly becomes a life-or-death feature when you realize one wrong step could mean mission failure. Musk claims Optimus can carry 45 pounds, but can it do that in Mars' 38% gravity while navigating unpredictable terrain? That remains to be seen. The logistical challenges are even more mind-boggling. Each Mars mission requires something called orbital refueling, essentially a gas station in space. Current estimates suggest this would demand up to 20 additional Starship launches just to fuel one Mars-bound vehicle. We're talking about an unprecedented ballet of spacecraft rendezvous and fuel transfers. All automated, all needing to work perfectly. Then there's the question of what exactly Optimus would do on Mars. SpaceX has been characteristically vague, but leaked documents suggest three primary objectives. Testing mobility systems in Martian gravity and terrain deploying and maintaining solar arrays for power generation, and potentially beginning site preparation for future human habitats. This last point is where things get really sci-fi. Musk has hinted at having Optimus manipulate local materials, essentially using Martian dirt and rocks to create rudimentary structures. The robot's hands, designed for factory work on Earth, would need to handle entirely different tools and substances millions of miles from any human assistance. The financials are equally staggering. Scientific American estimates the full Mars program could cost trillions, yes, with a T. Even for the world's richest person, that's an impossible sum without government partnership. Interestingly, NASA has been suspiciously quiet about these plans, despite their own Mars ambitions. Some insiders suggest there may be behind-the-scenes collaboration happening, while others believe Musk is going full cowboy against NASA's warnings. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Elon's track record with deadlines. From Hyperloop to full self-driving cars to Mars colonization by 2024, the man has a history of wildly optimistic timelines. Even he admits the 2029 crewed mission target is theoretical, with 2031 being more realistic. But here's what's different this time. The hardware actually exists. Starship has flown, albeit with mixed success, and Optimus prototypes are walking around Tesla labs right now. The technological dominoes that need to fall for this to work are almost too numerous to count. Starship must achieve reliable Earth orbit and return. Orbital refueling needs to be perfected. Mars entry, descent, and landing systems require complete redesign. Optimus must be hardened against radiation and extreme temperatures. Autonomous operation systems need near-perfect reliability. Recent Starship tests show both promise and problems. While March's flight ended in explosion, the vehicle did achieve several critical milestones first. This pattern of fail fast, iterate faster, has been SpaceX's MO from the beginning. But Mars leaves no room for error. Perhaps most fascinating is the philosophical shift this represents. For decades, Mars exploration meant rovers specialized machines perfectly adapted for the task. Musk is betting everything on general-purpose humanoids instead. His argument? Future colonies will need robots that can use human tools in spacesuits. It's a gamble that could either revolutionize space robotics or become a very expensive lesson in planetary exploration. As for Optimus itself, the specs are impressive. 5'8", 125 pounds, 5 miles per hour walking speed, 45 pounds carrying capacity. But Mars presents challenges no Earth testing can fully simulate. How will its actuators handle months in zero gravity followed by Martian gravity? Can its vision systems cope with Mars's unique lighting conditions? 
These are unanswered questions that keep NASA veterans up at night. The radiation issue alone could be a deal breaker. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from cosmic rays, something Mars lacks. Optimus would need shielding that doesn't exist in current models, especially for its delicate AI systems. Some experts suggest the only solution might be burying habitats underground, which raises the question of why send humanoids at all if you're just going to dig tunnels. Then there's the return journey problem. Musk envisions Starship as a fully reusable system, but Mars lacks the infrastructure to refuel for a trip home. The plan apparently involves either producing fuel on Mars, technology that doesn't exist yet, or sending multiple advanced missions to preposition fuel adding years and billions to the timeline. What's truly shocking is how quickly this is all happening. The first full-scale Starship test was just last year. Optimus went from a guy in a spandex suit to walking robots in under three years. The pace is unprecedented in aerospace history, which explains both the excitement and skepticism from experts. University of Arizona's Chris Impey perhaps put it best. Implausible, but not impossible. That sums up the entire mission. The laws of physics don't forbid it, but the engineering challenges are staggering. Musk's 2026 target would require solving problems that have puzzled NASA for decades in just two years. Yet consider what SpaceX has already accomplished. They revolutionized rocket landings when experts said it couldn't be done. They're launching more mass to orbit than entire nations. If anyone can pull this off, it's probably them. But Mars is orders of magnitude harder than anything attempted before. The implications of success are world-changing. A working Mars transport system would make lunar bases look trivial by comparison. It would prove that interplanetary civilization is possible within our lifetimes. And it would cement SpaceX's dominance in space for the next century. But failure could set back Mars' ambitions for decades. A high-profile crash might scare off investors and governments from supporting future attempts. The stakes couldn't be higher. Which explains why most space agencies prefer slow, methodical approaches. As we stand on the brink of this audacious attempt, one thing is certain. History will remember 2026 as either the year humanity became interplanetary, or the year we learned just how hard space exploration really is. Either way, the next two years will be the most exciting in spaceflight since Apollo. So, what do you think? Is Musk about to make history or repeat it with another missed deadline? The countdown to Mars has officially begun, and we'll be here to cover every explosive second of it. Let me know your thought in the comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for tuning and we'll catch you in the next update.